Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. This video will be about using coroutines in combination with Firebase Firestore. If you use Firestore in a real project, it can often happen that you get in the so-called callback hell. That happens if you have several network operations that all depend on each other and always use callbacks. And that is basically how Firestore worked in the past. So let's say you want to construct a chat between two users. First, you need to get the data from user one, then you need to get the data from user two, and then you need to get the messages these users wrote each other to finally be able to construct the chat object. In the past, this was usually handled with callback functions. So the requests run asynchronously and notify us with the data when it's available. So you can think of it, for example, as a function get user one, that is a lambda function. It gives us user one here. And because all of that data we want to get here relies on each other, so we need to get user one, user two, and the messages to finally construct a chat object. Then that means we also need to call get user two inside um, of this get user one function because only if we got user one, we want to call um, get user two because then we want to get the second user. And in here, we finally want to be able to get the messages between those two users. So we call a function get messages. And here we can finally construct our chat object. And as you can see, that is super ugly code. And that is also exactly what is considered the callback hell, because you have so many callbacks nested into each other, and there is actually no way out. But luckily, since we have coroutines, there is a way out, and that is using coroutines. Because they can just pause and resume, they don't rely on callbacks. So we can just make network call 1, pause until the data is available, make network call 2, pause until the data is available again, and so on. So we can get all the data without indenting our code. But let's actually see how we can use coroutines with Firestore on a real example. For that, we need to add an additional dependency, which I will paste in the description, of course. So I will just paste it in my build.gradle file here. And I also assume that you set up Firestore already, because this tutorial is not about setting that up. If you don't know how to do that, then you shouldn't watch a video about using coroutines in Firestore, and you should rather learn how to set it up first. So I will just paste the dependency here, that is this coroutines play services dependency. And what I also want to change is, I want to use the ktx dependency of Firestore, so we can just append a minus ktx here. That is just basically the Kotlin version of Firestore and it's optimized for Kotlin. So if you have done that, click on sync now and go back into main activity. And just to give you a little insights, here's my Firestore database. I just created a uh, collection coroutines and a document tutorial in that, which is currently empty. And I'll just show you how we can set data to that document while using coroutines. And afterwards, we will get that data and display it on a text view in our app. So the text view is actually in my activity main. I already created that. It is called TV data and initially says it um, didn't get any data yet. So make sure to set that up and jump back into main activity. First of all, let's get the document reference, val tutorial document, and I will set that equal to firebase.firestore. Oh, we have to import firebase um, dot collection. Here you um, have to insert your own collection name, of course. Mine is coroutines and get the document afterwards with the name tutorial. And let's actually move this into a separate line here for readability. Then I will quickly create a data class person up here, which will just be the data that I will paste in my database in my document. I will give it a name, which is a string of course, and set it to an empty string initially, and make sure to really give these arguments default values, because otherwise they won't work with um, Firestore. And I will give it an h, which is an integer, and set it to minus 1. Then we can go down and create an instance of that person class. I will just call it Peter, which is a person, of course. Um, the name is Peter, and he is 25 years old. Then we can start a curtain now. I will just use global scope here, globalscope.launch. And I will launch this in 
the IO dispatcher, of course, because we are using an IO operation here. And when we now want to add data to our Firestore document, then the only thing we need to do is we need to um, take our tutorial document or document reference and call dot set after that. And then we can pass a class here. So basically any object that should be saved in that document. In our case, that is just our Peter and that is it. But if we leave it like that, it won't actually make use of our coroutine. Instead, what we need to do is we need to call dot await afterwards. Whoops, dot await. And if we press on await and press control plus Q, then you can see that is actually a suspend function. So that will block our coroutine until the data is available, or in this case, until the data is successfully set to our document. And in general, every time a Firebase function returns a task object like this set function, if we press control Q on that, you can see this returns a task. Then we can call dot await on that and basically execute this task in our coroutine. So as you can see, it's super easy to use coroutines with Firestore. Let's also get the data that we just set to our document by writing tutorial document dot get this time. And as you can see, this get function also returns a task. So we can call this await function on that. Let's do that dot await. And we will also want to convert this to an object. So we are actually able to get the data in form of a Kotlin object. So we call dot to object afterwards. And now we have to provide a class. So Kotlin knows how to interpret that data. And that is exactly our person class that should be the output of that function. And this time we of course want to save that in a variable. So val person is equal to this piece of code. And to actually set that person data now to our text view, if you remember, we need to switch the context of our coroutine because we're currently in the IO dispatcher and we're only allowed to change UI in the main dispatcher. So let's write with context dispatchers.main and in here we just call TV data dot text is equal to person dot to string. And let's also actually add a little bit delay here. Um, like three seconds is fine, I guess. So we just see what's going on because those two lines will, will be executed immediately. We won't even notice a time difference. So let's run our app and try it out. You can see didn't get any data yet. And after three seconds, it got the person data from our Firestore. And also if I take a look in my Firestore, there is our Peter with age 25. And what we prevented right here is basically that we have an on success listener here on success task. Let's choose this. And inside here, we get the person again without a wait have a, an on success task again. So that callback hell, you know what I mean? It's just something that you can very easily prevent with coroutines. And that's why they are so popular and cool right now. And also, as you know, from the last video, coroutines are actually lifecycle aware. So we also don't need to worry about asynchronously executed Firestore calls that still run the when, when the activity is stopped. Normally, we would have to write some logic to prevent that. But with coroutines, we can just use the lifecycle scope to prevent that. So it's really cool. So I hope this video gave you a good overview of coroutines for Firestore. If it did, then please let me know in the comments. And also, if there's anything I can improve on, let me know. That would be really helpful for me. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.